In this video, we're going to look at solving compound inequalities. And a compound inequality is when you're taking two inequalities and they've been written as a single inequality. Uh, for example, this, it would be uh, 20 is less than or equal to 5x plus 7 and 5x plus 7 is less than 80. So those two inequalities have been combined uh, as one where they have something in common and they both involve 5x plus 7. Uh, there's two ways I'm going to show you to solve this. The first one is to split the inequality into the two inequalities that I just mentioned. And now that I've got that split into these two inequalities, uh, it's just solving a multi-step inequality problem. And I just do it twice. So I'll go ahead and do that here. Subtract 7 from both sides. Divide both sides by 5. And I need to solve this one as well. Again, subtract 7 from both sides. Divide 5 into both sides. And I've got two inequalities as a result. Now, again, x is involved in both of them, just as 5x plus 7 was involved in both of these inequalities here. So I'm going to graph these and see if we can, again, write it as a compound inequality. Take these two inequalities and write them as a compound inequality. So x is greater than or equal to 13 fifths. Or equal to means I'm going to shade it. And then x is less than 73 fifths, but not equal to, so I'm not going to shade. And now I have to decide the overall solution. Uh, there's really three parts to this graph. We've got a piece that is to the left or smaller than 13 fifths. We've got what's between 13 fifths and 73 fifths, and then we've got what is to the right or greater than 73 fifths. We're going to look at each of these three parts. If we pick a value uh, far to the left, like 0, we would see that it is a solution to less than 73 fifths because it's on the graph, the green graph here. It is not a solution to x is greater than 13 fifths. Uh, in fact, you can see it is to the left, so less than. So the values over here are not part of our solution to this problem. They were a solution to this piece, but not to everything in the problem. Between 13 fifths and 73 fifths. If we take the values here, uh, it, this value, let's say uh, 20 fifths or 4, 20 fifths would be less than 73 fifths and greater than 13 fifths. And so it's on both or in, it's a solution of both of these inequalities, so it's a solution to the whole problem. This area, this space between 13 fifths and 73 fifths are solutions to the inequality. Uh, over here, uh, say maybe something to the far right of 73 fifths, like 100 fifths, uh, 100 fifths would be on the red graph greater than 13 fifths, but it would not be on the green graph less than 73 fifths. So things over here are not solutions to both of these inequalities, therefore they're not solutions to the original problem. So our, our overall graph would be, of this solution, would be these values. Values that are greater than or equal to 13 fifths and less than or equal to 73 fifths. So the values between 13 fifths and 73 fifths, including 13 fifths. Now you can also then use that to help you write a single inequality for your overall solution, and that would be 13 fifths is less than or equal to x, which is less than 73 fifths. Now, what I said is I'm going to show you two ways to solve this. The first one is to split this inequality into its two parts. 20 is less than 5x plus 7, and 5x plus 7 is less than 80. And then there's another way, which is to actually take this inequality and work with it all at once. Now, you might have noticed and I wish I wouldn't have erased it, uh, that the steps we took as we were solving the two individual inequalities, 
we first subtract it by from a 7 from both sides, then we divide the 5 into both sides. And this inequality, we subtracted 7, and then we divided by 5. It was the exact same work. And so since it was the exact same work, we can do it all at once. I'm just working with uh, all three parts of this inequality at once, subtract 7 from everything. The next step was to divide by 5. But whatever we do to one part of the inequality, we have to do to all of them. So we have 13 fifths is less than or equal to x is less than 73 fifths. And that was the solution that we had before when we split it. And that should be the case. If there's two different ways of solving the problem, they both should lead to the, the, the same answer. So, the second way that you might go about solving a compound inequality is to just work through the inequality as one piece, remembering that whatever you do to one part of the inequality, you must do to all three. Uh, it does take a little bit less writing, and if that's a way that you prefer, you might want to work through your problems this way. The other way makes a lot of sense to me, though, because I'm thinking individually about uh, what each part of this means, okay? All right, now this next part, uh, I've got a negative in there. And I did that because, if you remember from previous posting or just from your classwork, uh, when you do a division by a negative, you have to reverse the inequality symbol. And I just wanted to show you the same is going to hold true with a compound inequality. So the first thing we would do to solve this is subtract 6 from all the pieces. And we've got 2x is less than 14, uh, greater than or equal to, that's negative 2 on this side. The next step would you divide all three parts by 2. Sorry, negative 2. Got the negative. And that's positive 1. When we divide, we reverse the inequality symbol. That's x. Reverse that inequality as well. Negative 7. So in this particular problem, I had to reverse the inequality because I was dividing by a negative. And I do have a video posted. If you have questions about that, please check that out. Uh, but when you divide by a negative, when you're working with inequalities, you must re reverse the inequality sign. Thing you have to keep in mind is you have to do that on both of these inequalities. You can't just reverse one of them. All right, so my solution is 1 is greater than or equal to x is greater than 7. Uh, it's pretty common that uh, you would write this in least to greatest order, so I'd have to change that to negative 7. Negative 7 is less than x is less than or equal to 1. So, uh, Again, this was solving a compound inequality. I chose in this particular case to keep it all together just as one inequality and, and work through it all at once as opposed to splitting it, which would also work, in which case I would have had two inequalities. One would have been x is uh, less, great, less than or equal to 1 and x is greater than negative 7, and then I would need to piece them back together uh, again in the end to get a compound inequality. All right, so that's a couple of examples of solving compound inequalities.